Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 26th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery and what you can see is kind of a big mess of clouds out here across the Pacific Ocean, kind of pointed right at the Pacific Northwest. Going to try to bring some precipitation for some areas, but we've got some changes coming here as we go through the upcoming weekend as we're going to build a ridge and we're going to get some of this warmer weather in here for at least a time. We'll take a look at that as we go through the rest of the video here this morning. So right now here we are you can kind of see the clouds kind of end right along the cascades there western oregon western washington kind of socked in this morning for the most part and you can see the sunset or the sunrise sorry and then coming back out to where we are today so yeah got a lot of cloud activity out there but again that will be changing i'll show you more on that here in a moment lightning strike density over the last 24 hours northeast washington british columbia and some of northeast oregon into portions of idaho western montana did get some thunderstorms pretty typical for this time of year for the intermountain west to be getting those thunderstorms nothing for a van Vancouver, BC, Seattle, or Portland, or Western Oregon for that matter. Now, if you want your own affordable home weather station, click on that link down below to save 10% off. This thing is awesome. You will not regret buying this system, and it stores everything for you in the cloud. Very fun weather station, especially for the price. It is the best one you can buy. So here we go. Spokane National Weather Service updated that uh, this this morning. And you can see as we go through Sunday and Monday, it looks like a good dust devil chasing out there. I may be going out there and maybe doing a live stream. I, you know, probably my first dust devil live stream ever. Um, but yeah, some fun stuff out there as far as dust devils are concerned. And you can see the warm up here as we go through this weekend and towards the first part of next week. So thunderstorm activity for today. This is day one. There we go. Portions of Idaho, Montana. Doesn't show anything for Washington or Oregon today or tomorrow or day three for that matter so we get a little bit of a break here across some of the intermountain west show you some of the models on that here in a moment though looking at the european 500 millibar height so you can kind of see the zonal flow the lowered heights <clears throat> across portions of the gulf of alaska but as we go on in through Friday, you start to see that ridge built Friday night. And as we go on in through Saturday, it starts to get established here over the West Coast of North America and across Pacific Northwest as we start to warm up a bit here. And you can see the trough well out over the offshore waters north of the Hawaiian Islands, out across from the Gulf of Alaska. And then what is to come after that? Well, that's the big question right now. But you can still see the above average heights as we head off in towards the mid portion of next week. Now, looking at mean sea level pressure, I've showed this the last few days as well, but if you've missed this here we go the ridge builds across the region and you can see this little area blue there up the california coast that is one of the signatures of heat waves here in the pacific northwest this is not really what i would call a heat wave but definitely a warm up here across the area but this is what's known as a thermal trough a very subtle feature there it's kind of marking the offshore flow that comes and compress when compression winds come off the higher terrain and we start to really warm things up and that heat can extend all the way out across some of the coastal areas as well. But when that lower pressure and the thermal troughs start to kick inland there, we start that onshore flow back on and we start to bring some of that more marine air back into the region and starts to cool us down. So here we go on through the day Monday. You see that thermal trough kind of right here uh, across, just across maybe the Cascades, just a little bit further west. But then that starts to uh, pivot itself inland here as we go through the day on Tuesday. So we're going to get a little bit of a cool down there. You can see the higher pressure there versus the lower pressure inland as we go on into the mid portion of this week. But still not a strong onshore flow or big marine push coming as we go through next week. Things are still going to stay fairly warm or on the warm side of it uh things relatively speaking so taking a look here at uh 5, feet 850 millibars you can see with this onshore flow we're kind of below normal here as we go through thursday now we're on into friday still below normal here across a lot of bc washington some of oregon then we head on in towards this weekend and you kind of see the ridge out here building you see the flow turn slightly offshore and that's what's marking our thermal trough and kind of warming us up aloft here as well again at 5,000 feet across the region then what happens after that is in some question but we'll keep checking that out on a daily basis now looking at the european model going through the day today it does show a few showers as we go through this afternoon and you can't rule out a lightning strike pretty close to the canada washington coastline there um thunderstorms though generally across some of idaho and western montana and then with some precipitation running in here back across some of northwest washington vancouver island southwest bc we head off in towards friday and some of these <clears throat> excuse me some of these showers are still around as we go through the day friday but then they'll kind of quickly be wrapping up here across a lot of washington and once you get a bit further 
are up above uh, or north of Vancouver Island, the Haida Gwaii, they're still dealing with some precipitation, but Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and some of Montana and some of southern BC are going to be drying out as we go through this week. And you can clearly see that storm track pointed way northward here. But watch what happens on Monday. I'm going to back that up. You can see some of this thunderstorm activity coming across some of southern Oregon. So we've got to watch out for that as we go through the day on Monday. Some thunderstorms starting to creep up there also. So um, also, I wanna, I'm going to watch this band here as well. It'd be kind of interesting here to see that as we go through Monday night, Tuesday morning. Will this have some convection associated with it as well across some of Western Oregon and Western Washington? We'll watch that over the next couple of days there as we go off in towards the midweek period of next week. So taking a look at total precipitation in inches, going to kind of scroll through this fairly quickly. Let's see what it shows as far as precipitation amounts of the thunderstorms as we go through Monday across some of Southern Oregon. Where are we? We're scrolling out there. We dry out a bit and then we bring some of that precipitation back it does show that popping up right there but you can see even with this uh, these showers over the next couple of days seattle only showing up with what seven hertz of an inch of rain a little bit better across southwest bc uh, up towards arlington and bellingham a little bit more precipitation some of northwest washington there as well we'll scroll all the way out to hour 144 just to kind of finish things up there though now looking at total precipitation on the national blend of models here so we're going to scroll through there and again look at that only by the time we get to this week in seattle still only three hundredths of an inch there's that thunderstorm activity there for some of the Oregon coastal, uh, not coastal, but Southern Cascades. And then we go uh, that goes through on next Tuesday. But yeah, not a lot of precipitation here, and not much for Eastern Washington or Eastern Oregon, a little bit better uh, north of Seattle there, but still not much to write home about. Now looking at daily two meter max temperature, this is for, actually let me back this up so we can see today's temperatures. Look at that 68 for Seattle, maybe low 70s for Portland, some mid 80s out there for Eastern Washington and Oregon. We go through Friday, still a lot of clouds around. We go through Saturday, start to warm things up a little bit. There, see Seattle at 73. There we go on Sunday. Look at that, Seattle getting back up towards 80. Look at Olympia, 83 degrees. You see this 100 degree rating across some of Southern Oregon there. Boise back up towards 95. So definitely warming things back up. Southwest BC, an 80 degree reading showing up there also. Monday, a very warm day. Seattle maybe mid 80s by this time frame, it's some low 90s returning to uh, Portland. And, uh, you know, if you want to beat the heat, you can get out towards some of the coastal areas there, but still pretty nice weather out on the coast. And Monday, look at that 100 degrees plus for some areas of eastern Washington, Boise up over 100 degrees maybe as well. And then we go through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You notice we don't cool down too much. We're still around 80 for Seattle, and we don't get a widespread cooling trend here as we go on all the way towards next week. And I mean, it, it's almost the 4th of July here, and we're getting some mixed signals. We were showing some troughing here for the 4th of July in previous model runs, but now we're kind of backing off that and maybe a fairly nice day here as we go through the 4th of July. Um, if we take a look at the European Artificial Intelligence, we'll take a little bit of a look at the extent of forecast. There goes our ridge as we go through this upcoming weekend. And that ridging wants to hang on a little bit there. As you notice, we go through the 4th of July. This would bring some pretty nice weather with the storm track well out over the Gulf of Alaska here, kind of keeping us dry for the 4th of July. But again, we'll be checking back on that. We still have a long way to go before the 4th of July it gets here. And look at way off into the extent of forecast. Look at this ridge build across the Gulf of Alaska. Purely a fantasy forecast right now, but kind of marking the, the potential summertime conditions we might get as we go through the mid portion of July. We'll see how that unfolds. Now, look at the West. This is since April 1st, max temperature departure from average. Look at just how warm we've been here since April 1st across the Pacific Northwest. Only a couple select areas, you got to cherry pick those versus the entire region has been quite a bit above normal. I mean, look at some of these oranges are four to six above normal. Some of the reds are six to eight degrees above normal for this time of year during that time period, April 1st through June 25th. And look at the precipitation here for uh, um, all the way through uh, since July 1st, 2024. So significantly below normal here across much of Western Washington and a lot of Northwest Oregon as well. Some areas really concerningly above below normal uh, precipitation amounts. Like Western Washington and Seattle is between, what, 12 and 8 inches below normal since last July 1st. And if we take a look at percent of average precipitation since January 1st, I mean, look at that. The Seattle metro there and some of Snohomish, and Pierce, and Thurston County, all the way down through Western Oregon is between 50 and 70 percent of average precipitation. And much of the state of Washington is below normal. Just a sliver down there towards the Tri-Cities has been slightly above. But the entire state there has been below normal since April, uh, since 
January 1st. This is April 1st here. And again, the entire state, no doubt about it, has been below normal. Some places substantially so, like down uh, towards Pearson and even into Southern King County, between 25 and 50 percent below normal. And look at some of the east slopes of the Cascades of Washington. Not a good look here. A lot of areas there, 25 percent or less of normal since April 1st. And there's the 6 to 10 day. Shouldn't be a surprise with what I just showed you. And I would take this with a grain of salt right now, 6 to 10 day. Who knows what they're exactly latching onto here, but not really seeing that signal as of right now. And if you guys want to help support the channel, you can go to the Patreon page and do it. Or you can just sign up here. It's free to do so. And you can send me uh, some of your uh, images out there across the region, your sunsets or you know, debt dust devils that you may get or anything you want to chat about. And anyone else can comment as well. So yeah, go ahead and check that out. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We will do this all again tomorrow. And I will talk to you guys then.